Welcome to Sparks of History, where Jewish history and world history meet. We are very pleased to have with us today noted lecturer, educator, and rabbinic authority, Rabbi Yitzhak Breidowitz. Rabbi Breidowitz received ordination from Nair Yisrael Rabbinical College and holds a Juris Doctor from Harvard Law School. Rabbi Breidowitz is Rabbi Emeritus of Woodside Synagogue Ahavas Torah in Silver Spring, Maryland and is a former professor at the University of Maryland School of Law. In April 2010, Robreidowitz made Aliyah, moved to Israel, and currently serves as a senior lecturer at Yeshiva Or Sameach in Jerusalem and as the Rav of Kehilas Or Sameach. And today we will be discussing one of the most fascinating and seminal phenomena of modern Jewish history, the Musser Movement. Well, Breitowitz, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much. It's my honor. Uh, just to get started, general overview, what, what was the state of Eastern European Jewry in the early 19th century? Yeah, the truth is the 19th century is a particularly interesting century because so many things were happening, both in general culture and as a result within the Jewish world itself. Uh, you had forces of nationalism uh, that were going around that kind of created or fed into Zionism, at least in the secular political sense. Uh, you also had uh, the notion in many places of, although anti-Semitism certainly existed, but the notion of the collapse of the ghetto, in which Jews were given certain opportunities that they had formally been denied, access to universities, the ability to open up businesses, uh, the collapse of the ghettoization that had been imposed on Jews for literally centuries. Now, that may sound like a wonderful thing, but in point of fact, in terms of religion, in terms of Torah observance, it created enormous problems. In fact, there's an old Misa that when Napoleon was invading Russia, the Balatanya maintained we ought to pray for the Tsar to be victorious instead of Napoleon, because Napoleon will liberate the body and destroy the Neshama, the czar will enslave the body, and uh, as a result, the neshama will flourish. So the challenges of the 19th century uh, largely did involve the notion of uh, the growth of Reformed Judaism, the notion of secularism, what is called, of course, this is a name the other side gave themselves, the Haskalah, the Enlightened Ones. Now, Haskalah itself is an interesting phenomenon because they were masculine, who in fact were Shomer Mitzvot, but they wanted to be involved in secular culture, somewhat like modern Orthodox today. There were, on the other hand, Maskilim, who were Kofrim, Apikorsim, Gemurim, who were not only Chotim, but Machti Yisarabim. So as a result, once the ghetto walls collapsed, Jews were running in all sorts of directions. And the old solid order of Limud HaTorah and Shemirat HaMitzvah was in fact undergoing a tremendous rupture and a lot of things were collapsing. There was a special aid crisis among the younger people, the new generation, those who were leaving the shtetlach to go to the cities, the big cities like Warsaw, Vilna, uh, in which they were exposed to all sorts of currents of politics and secularism. So as a result, it was a very, very, very challenging time, uh, both for the non-Hasidic uh, Orthodox and the, the Hasidic world as well. And a number of movements or phenomena arose within Torah Judaism to address some of the challenges of this assimilation mode that became activated as a result of the collapse of the, of the ghetto. Musser as an intellectual history movement can be situated as one of the responses to Haskalah. And I think we'll probably develop that as as we go on. 